going on? What's going on? Your boy, Coach Anthony, man. Just got back from New York City. We had Tevin Farmer. I know you see all the green. You see the Philly gear. You know, I don't really never wear anything other than the Yankee hat. But, um, yeah, man, you see all the Philly gear. Tevin Farmer, Philadelphia fighter. We went to New York City. We were the co-main event on the Canelo Alvarez undercard. Pretty big stage, man. Madison Square Garden, the Mecca of Boxing. You know, it was an honor to be part of that camp, part of that fight. We came out victorious. And I also got a chance to watch Canelo live in person, man. That was pretty cool, you know what I mean? He fought for 168 world title, went up there, dominated easily. But what I want to do is talk about that fight a little bit and what I saw on how he won the fight. Um, it, for me, it was pretty easy to analyze and break down, but I'm just going to go over a few of the techniques. I got none other than one of my champs here, Gabriel Crespo. 2017, he advanced to the Nationals in the Junior Olympics. He didn't go to the Nationals because he had a family issue that he had to take care of, so unfortunately he didn't compete. I'm pretty confident if he did, he would have won the whole thing. And um, this year he'll be representing New Jersey in the regionals uh, for the Silver Gloves. So you're looking at a pretty accomplished kid right here. But what I'm going to go ahead is um, go ahead and use him as my demonstrating partner on what Canelo Alvarez really did. And for me, if you haven't seen my positions video, please go ahead and watch that video because I described how you can tell what a guy is thinking um, and what he's trying to do depending on how he holds his upper body. Canelo kind of stood dead center in the middle the whole time. He knew that he was going to walk right through Rocky. Um, he, he knew he was going to walk right through him. So he really didn't seem like he was uh, concerned with any other offense coming back at him. His goal was just to get to that body, dig, and hurt, okay? So, you know, he kind of was in his boxing stance. He had his hands up, dead center in the middle. And, you know, we've seen Canelo kind of use shoulder rolls and bend and use some slick stuff. He didn't use none of that stuff in this fight because he really didn't feel that he needed it, all right? But what he did, doing, the fact that he was the shorter guy, you know, he had to use the jab, obviously, to get into range. But this combination that he used, he used this repeatedly throughout the first round. He actually dropped them with this combination, which was a jab, left uppercut, hook to the body, bang, okay? So he went ahead and he stepped with the jab, he was in range for the uppercut, bang. Now when he threw that jab and he got there, he threw that left uppercut, bang, he lift his head up right there while he's frozen, step over to the body, and rip, bang, that's it. And when you freeze a guy, that's typically how you get to the body. It's pretty difficult to get to a guy's body if you go straight for it. You gotta throw a headshot to throw the guy off. So either you hit him with the headshot or you get him to cover up and block the headshot, leaves the body shot wide open. So we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate how it looked in, in, you know, in normal speed. It's gonna be pop, pop, bang, all right? Do it again. Pop, pop, bang, good. One more time. Pop, pop, bang. One more time. Pop, pop, bang, all right? So that was the first combination that I saw. The next one was, like I said, he had his head down, he got himself, he moved his head a little bit. He kind of did a little shift in left and right. I didn't see too much tick tock and movement. He kind of just kept his hands up, kind of walked his way in a little bit. And once he got here, he threw the right uppercut and then left hook to the body, all right? The left hook to the body was really the main goal for him because he knows that's one of his best shots. So he went ahead and he threw the right uppercut, which puts you in position to throw a body shot. When you're throwing the right uppercut, all your weights over your lead leg, bang, you can dig that left hook to the body. So go ahead, pop, bang, good. Again, pop, bang, good. Again, pop, bang, good. Again, pop, bang, all right? That was another combination. And the last shot that he threw, just a looped and right hand, okay? So he basically waited till he had Fielding in a position where he was kind of stepping to his left, and he just threw the right hook. Walked right into the shot, okay? And as soon as he did that, he went straight down. So he had a situation, and bang, just walked right into it. Do it again. And it was that easy, man. I mean, it didn't hurt that I felt that uh, he was Rocky Fielding was completely outclassed. Um, it was pretty easy for Canelo to just walk right through him. You know, when you're, when you're boxing a guy who really isn't giving you nothing to worry about, it's pretty easy for you to go ahead and just attempt these things. But had Rocky used his jab, utilized his straight right hand, 
threw some hard shots, some hard uppercuts. Canelo would have had to use a much more calculated approach. But hey, man, more power to him. He got the 168 pound world title and he looked great doing it. Um, but this is just my breakdown and my recap on the fight. And I hope you guys like it, man. Like, comment, subscribe. Please share the channel. Leave your comments below. Let me know what else you guys want to see. Follow me on Instagram at Coach Anthony. Boxing Life.